Hello, this is presentation one, part two. Uh, I'm Dr. Kritzer and welcome back. Uh, in the last presentation, uh, we mentioned several ways to collect data and one of them is the survey or questionnaire. And this uh, presentation is more about making that survey. Now, you know, when you make your survey questions, you could make the questions closed-end or open-ended. Uh, the closed-end questions are called structured, and the open-ended questions are called semi-structured. Now, here are some examples of structured questions. How satisfied or unsatisfied are you with the graduates of the teacher's college? And we have a continuum of answers available from very unsatisfied to very satisfied. Well, you can see both extremes are represented. And generally, there are going to be about five choices, three between the two extremes. How helpful or unhelpful has this been? How useful or how unuseful has this been? Those kind of questions would be structured questions. And semi-structured questions, uh, or the, un the unstructured kind, are more open-ended. Like, for example, what knowledge and skills should graduates have? What three things did you learn the most in this class about? What are the greatest characteristics of workers? So if you're going to use uh, these kinds of open-ended, unstructured or semi-structured type questions, it's probably better to interview the person in, in person rather than have them fill out a survey. Uh, so, and, and as we move on, here's an example of a closed-ended uh, question. It's very simple response. How many times did you visit the community center? And here are the choices. Uh, but make sure that the choices don't overlap. In this case, we had a choice of zero, one to three, four to six, seven to nine, or ten or more. Another similar type of a closed-ended question would be income level. And notice that the income levels don't overlap. Uh, sometimes we want to use intensity scales, distinguish between strong feelings and, and mediocre feelings. They're, these are more powerful multiple choice questions than a simple agree or disagree because it tells us the intensity of the feeling, the intensity of the agreement or disagreement. It could be a one-way intensity scale that goes from always all the way down to never. Or it could be a Likert-type scale that goes from strongly agree to strongly disagree. You'll notice in the one-way scale, the middle category is meaningful in that, uh, in this case, about half the time. Whereas in the Likert scale, they use a neutral middle, neither agree nor disagree. Uh, that could also be a, a non-applicable uh, type of an answer. Again, these one-way intensity scales or these Likert scales are, are really amenable for, uh, for surveys. Uh, the questions when you have to rank uh, your answers are difficult to put in and done, do well on surveys harder to analyze, uh, and uh, they may look easy to answer, but there are confu there uh, tends to be confusion, and it's best to avoid these kinds of questions in a close-ended uh, survey, especially one that's done online. Uh, uh, good advice is to not to only ask one question at a time avoid the triple barrel question like uh, uh, she uh, 
do you think your supervisor communicates well with staff about their performance as well as about what is happening in the agency? Well, maybe they communicate well with their staff about their performance, but not about the other. Uh, so those are double-barreled questions and you want to avoid them. Another thing that would be helpful is try uh, using SurveyMonkey. It's a web-based survey tool available online and it's one of the readings uh, uh, in uh, this course. SurveyMonkey is free, by the way, uh, and something that is easily used uh, for, your, for your various lines of work. So uh, that has been uh, part uh, two of presentation one on surveys, and I will be back with you in the next presentation.